Hello everyone, those who are online, please say hi in the chat window so that we can start the session. Please say hi so that we can start the session. Hi Pratibha. Hi Mary. So let us wait for one or two minutes for everyone to arrive. As soon as everyone will join in, then we will start. Okay. Hi Darshan. Hello Rajesh, good afternoon. <coughs> good afternoon everyone. So I think we can start, right? Pratibha Mary, are you ready? Ready? Are you guys ready for the session? I think Jay is not attending the classes. So, actually Jay specifically requested me to uh, take these classes for theory of computation, live classes before I take other subjects. So that is why I took TOC before I take other subjects. But I think he is not attending the class, he is not available. Chalo, sure, let us start. So basically in the previous session we have seen what is a grammar and we have seen some of the operations on grammar. Now there are two topics that are left on grammar. One is what is your conjunctive, what, what is your Chomsky normal form and second is your Gribach normal form. And then using this we can also study uh, the algorithm which is your CYK algorithm. Now the thing is because you guys are preparing for UGC net. For UGC net, this CYK algorithm is not at all necessary. Even for gate, this is not necessary. But again, a lot of people, they cover this CYK algorithm. If I do not cover any topic, other people complain, sir, why you have not completed this topic? So I'm just telling you very clearly, I have not covered pumping lemma here because pumping lemma, you should only know what is a pumping lemma, but you do not require any proof of pumping lemma for the examination. Specifically, I have not covered pumping lemma. Specifically, I am not going to cover CYK algorithm also. Okay. So, uh, you also, I mean, Pratibha, I think you are studying the subject for the very first time. So, I suggest you do one thing. Uh, just read something about pumping lemma. You do not need a whole of the proof. You do not need so much in-depth knowledge regarding pumping lemma. You should only know why pumping lemma is used or what is pumping lemma. That's it. So, what I will do is in the end of the subject, if I feel that there are some time, I will cover this CYK algorithm, I will cover this pumping lemma, I will cover CNF and GNF. But right now, I am not covering CNF and GNF because if you just want to know what is the CNF and GNF, then that is just like a 10 minutes topic. So what you can do is, I have already recorded videos on CNF, GNF, pumping lemma. So you can go to the pre-recorded videos and you can watch the video for CNF and GNF. So right now, I am starting with uh, Turing machine and in today's session also, after the Turing machine, if we feel that we have time, today itself I will cover CNF and GNF. 
right so because tomorrow i want to dedicate full day on your decidability and countability kal hamara jo pura din hai hum log sirf decidability aur countability topic hi karenge on the full day in today's session i am focusing more on turing machine and uh, cnf and gnf if we get some time then only i will cover cnf gnf otherwise i will not cover cnf and gnf today okay so so let us start then i guess we can start the topic so today's topic here is your turing machine so let us start what exactly is a turing machine i'll take some examples of turing machine i think there are many people are watching to jitne bhi students watch kar rahe hain before you even start watching please like the video to videos ko like zarur kare so the topic is turing machine the topic is turing machine okay so in turing machine uh there are a few languages jiske sath uh, for some of these languages you cannot create a fault automata as well as you cannot create a push down automata okay so for example if i say the language is a rest power n such that n is greater than or equal to 1 for this language you can easily create a fault automata correct so fault automata is possible for this right and pda is also possible if i take a language which is a raised power n b raised power n such that n is greater than or equal to 1 for this language the find automata is not possible and push down automata is possible but if i take a language which is a raised power n b raised power n c raised power n such that n is greater than or equal to 1 for this language even find automata is not possible and pda is also not possible correct so there are so many languages for those languages you cannot even create a push down automata काफी सारी ऐसी लैंग्वेज एग्जिस्ट करती हैं जिनके लिए आप पुष्टन ऑटोमेटा भी नहीं बना सकते यू कैन नॉट मेक पुष्टन ऑटोमेटा फॉर दोज लैंग्वेजेस नाउ स्पेसिफिकली फॉर दोज लैंग्वेजेस वी हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज ट्यूरिंग मशीन सो मोस्ट ऑफ द लैंग्वेजेस वेयर यू कैन गिव अ मैथमेटिकल डेफिनेशन ऑफ द लैंग्वेज ऑब्वियसली देर विल एग्जिस्ट सम काइंड ऑफ ट्यूरिंग मशीन इफ देर एग्जिस्ट सम वे सो दैट यू कैन एन्यूमरेट द स्ट्रिंग्स ऑफ दैट लैंग्वेज इफ देर एग्जिस्ट सम वे दैट यू कैन क्रिएट द स्ट्रिंग्स ऑफ दैट लैंग्वेज ना फॉर दैट लैंग्वेज ट्यूरिंग मशीन विल ऑल्सो exist so turing machine is the most powerful machine most powerful mathematical machine which is known to the human kind uh, if you see the modern day computer they are as powerful as a turing machine so turing machine was introduced in the year 1940s 1950s even at that time when there was nobody know about the computer will be there in future so computer was first came into existence in 1970s and 1980s aapke jo programs hai c languages c++ languages these languages are designed in 1970s and 1980s and your computers came into existence in 1960s 70s 80s and i mean these year the uh, development of the computer started but again you can see that uh, these computers are still we are so far ahead in 1940s and 50s they have given a mathematical machine which is a turing machine and the turing machine is as powerful as your modern day computer till this point of time i'm telling you again till this point of time no one has ever been able to give a machine which is more powerful than the turing machine and because turing machine is equivalent to as power of a computer no one has ever been able to give a machine which is more powerful than your computer now the main point here is that when i say power power does not mean that calculation power power means the power of solving more problems does there exist any language for which you cannot create a turing machine right now there does not exist any such language for which you cannot create a turing machine but still we can prove that there might be some language jiske liye hum turing machine nahi bana sakte there might be some language for that language will not be able to create a turing machine i'm repeating again let me repeat this time in hindi again so those students who are watching in hindi it will become more interesting for them dekho jo turing machine hai turing machine is the more most powerful machine which is known to the human kind sabse zyada powerful machine hai अगर आप कोई भी लैंग्वेज दे सकते हैं तो उस लैंग्वेज के लिए आप ट्यूरिंग मशीन भी बना सकते हैं किसी ने आज तक कोई ऐसी लैंग्वेज नहीं दी है आई मीन इट इज मैथमेटिकली प्रूवन आप मैथमेटिकली बोल सकते हैं कि ऐसी लैंग्वेज एग्जिस्ट करती है जिसके लिए आप ट्यूरिंग मशीन नहीं बना सकते लेकिन कोई आज तक ऐसी लैंग्वेज का एग्जाम्पल नहीं दे पाया जिसके लिए आप ट्यूरिंग मशीन नहीं बना सकते दीज आर टू डिफरेंट स्टेटमेंट्स राइट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल जैसे आप फॉर एग्जाम्पल ग्रेविटी इज देयर सो यू कैन यू प्रूव दैट ग्रेविटी इज देयर एंड यू कैन सी ग्रेविटी बाई योर आइज इन द सेम वे यहाँ पर जो आपके पास लैंग्वेज है जिसके लिए आप ट्रेनिंग मशीन नहीं दे सकते आप उसको मैथमेटिकली बोल सकते हो सट काइंड ऑफ लैंग्वेज एग्जिस्ट लेकिन आप उस लैंग्वेज का एग्जाम्पल नहीं दे सकते 
till this point of time so that is why Turing machine is very very important correct and you will understand how this Turing machine works and how can we perform a lot of operations based on Turing machine how can we prove that the Turing machine is as powerful as your modern day computer all these things are going to be very very important now we are basically at the crux of the subject so right now from this point of time where we study Turing machine where we study decidability where we study countability is time ke baad, after this point of time your entire crux of the subject starts because before Turing machine we have seen a lot of machines we have seen uh, push down automata we have seen finite automata we have seen various versions of finite automata and push down automata so those versions are just to make you understand so such kind of problems exist such kind of machine exist so you, you know that's history so that in future if you are going to do some research you will be able to prove give some kind of machine which is even more powerful than your Turing machine so if you are theory of computation subject mein research mein interested hai, maybe you are going to do the research in the future then you want to uh, your aim or your job was to prove that there exists some machine which is more powerful than your Turing machine so let us understand the difference between all three machines and then we can take some examples okay <coughs> so in case of finite automata as you know that we have a tape here and on this tape we can load the symbol and we have a finite control and here we have a finite memory and this read head can only move in one direction it cannot write the symbol on the tape it will only move in one direction it can only read the symbol from the tape now when we have a push down automata in that case with this tape we have a finite control and this is your read head which can only move in one direction and here i'm using something called as a stack so that is your one stack correct now in case of turing machine it is similar to this the only difference here is the read head, head can move in both the directions this is your finite control correct this is your finite memory again there's a finite memory here here also in case of finite automata we have a finite memory and here also in case of Turing machine we have a finite memory here also you have finite memory hai. but the thing is this read head, head can move in both the directions left as well as right as well as it can also read and write on the tape here read or write your concept dono hota hai. you can read the some symbol from the tape as well as you can also write some symbol on the tape okay now there's one more basic difference here is that when we discuss about your finite automata in that case we say that after the string ends we have an epsilon symbol so epsilon is string of length zero okay in case of push down auto automata also we say that after the string we can have some epsilon symbol but in case of a Turing machine on the tape I'm saying on the tape not on the language I'm saying on the tape we do not have an epsilon symbol but rather we use a special symbol which is called as a blank now this blank symbol can be represented by using capital B or this can also be represented by using this square or in some books they are using some different terminologies so in some of these examples I think in most of my examples I'm going to use this capital B to represent this blank symbol if required if I want to make some difference then I might use this symbol to represent a blank symbol so that means if you have a string here like this so before this string and after this string you are always going to have this blank symbol okay you can always have these blank symbols and with the help of this read write head you can also change the value of this blank symbol this read write help head help say aap is blank symbol ki value ko bhi change kar sakte hain is this clear so far? Kaitna clear hai sabhi ke saath? Now let me give you one more example here. Let us suppose that the language is a raised to power n, b raised to power n, c raised to power n, such that n is greater than or equal to 1. This is your language. Now we already know that for this language you cannot create a finite automata. And we already know that for this language you cannot create a push down automata. We already know that for this language you cannot create a finite automata. Bana sakte hai, na hi aap is language ke liye push down automata. Bana sakte hai. Now, in this case, I can make a Turing machine. So, how will this Turing machine work like? I can load this string on the tape, correct? I can take any string whatsoever. See, Pratibha, in Turing machine, that is a variation of a Turing machine. If you use two stacks, that becomes a Q. So, I will come to that variation later on. Right now, I am not discussing about the variations. So, I will come to that variations later on. Right now, we are just trying to understand what exactly is a Turing machine. So, whatever you are telling, that is a variation of a Turing machine. 
so here the language is a raised power n b raised power n c raised power n such that n is greater than or equal to 1 so if i take any random string whatsoever which is present in this language so let us suppose the string is a a a b b b and c c c what i can do is i can load this string on the day tape this is your tape so i'm going to load this string which is a a a b b b c c c and this is the blank symbol okay now i can take my read write head so this is your read and write head so what we can do is when i see the first symbol a i will mark this symbol as x then i go in the right direction as soon as i see first b i will mark this b to y then again i will go in the right direction and when i see the first c i am going to mark it as z and then again i will come back from the beginning again i will mark one a as x one b as y one c as z again i will come back from the beginning again i am going to mark one a as x one b as y one c as z again i will come back from the beginning and now we will search for a a if we cannot find a a because after this x we have a y we do not have a a if we cannot find a a then i will search is there any b left so you will see there is no b left if there is no b left is there any c left you will see there is no c left if there is no a left no b left and no c left that means number of a's are equal to the number of b's which are equal to the number of c's so basically my main idea behind this is to go back in both the directions what i will do is if something is here i will mark it here i will go to the direction i will mark it here again i will come back here i will mark it here i will go to the direction mark it here mark it here and so on so this is something that we can do okay so assalamu alaikum faiza turk how are you so this is the function that we can perform here So let me show you how I can do it. Let us assume that we have the this same language. The language is a raised power n, b raised power n, c raised power n such that n is greater than or equal to 1. And the string that we have given for this language is this, which is a, 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 b, b, b b c c like this this is your string okay so the language is number of a should be equal to the number of b which should be equal to the number of c so what i can do is in the beginning i will go to a i will mark it as x then i will go to b i will mark it as y again come back go to a mark it x sorry after b i will go to c i will mark it as z again come back mark it a is x go to b mark b as y go to c mark c as z again come back go to a mark a as x go to b mark mark b as x then go to c and because we do not have any c so we'll be having a problem so because if number of a number of b and number of c they are not equal then again we will be having issues with it so let me show you how we can create a diagram for this this is your initial state a let me make it as q naught so in the beginning this readed head will be at the first position of the string so what i can do is because here n is greater than or equal to 1 that means minimum 1 a should be there so in the beginning if i see an a i will mark it as x and will go to the right direction i will go to the right direction so r represents going to the right direction l represents going to the left direction okay so let me show you what i'm trying to do here is so we have this string which is having a a a b b b c c and c and this is blank symbol and this is also blank symbol so currently your read write head is at its this position so first of all i am going to see this a i will mark this a as x and i will go to the right direction so when isko x mark kiya and i will go to the right direction so when you are going to the right direction you can get any number of a's here so we can have 1 a 2 a 3 a 4 a any number of a's here so leave all the a as it is and keep going to the right direction because this is in the loop leave this a as it is keep going to the right direction then as soon as you see a b jaise hi aapko ek b milega 
as soon as you see a b mark this b as y and go to the right direction so humne isko y mark kiya and now we are going to the right direction to the state q2 okay in between you can have any number of b's in between you can have any number of b's leave all these b as it is go to the right direction as soon as you find a c you can mark it as z and go to the left direction to humne jaise ye c mila humne isko z mark kiya and now we are going back to the left direction to the state q3 okay now while you are going to go to the left jaise hi aap yahan par left mein jayenge in between you can have any number of b's so leave all the b as it is go to left you can have n number of y leave all the y as it is go to left you can have n number of a leave all the a as it is go to left and as soon as you encounter one more x now we have to mark next a as x so again i'll do the same procedure as soon as you encounter one more x leave x as it is and go to right so basically kara kya in this case first a ko we marked it as x okay now we can have n number of a's in the beginning you can have n number of a's in the beginning as soon as we get a b marked as y again we can have n number of b's in the beginning then we get a z marked as c we marked as z we can go left so while going left you can have n number of b you can have n number of y you can have n number of a and as soon as you get a x again we will come back to this position so again we are coming back to that position by saying that we want to mark this a as x so here we can mark the next a as x so this way this a will be marked as x then we can have n number of a's in the beginning here we can have n number of a's and we can also have n number of y's so we can have n number of y's leave all the y as it is go to right as soon as you find a b jaise hi aapko b milega mark this b as y and again go to right so we are going to mark it as y and again we are going to right direction so again we can have any number of b's in the path we can also have any number of z in the path leave all the z as it is go to right and as soon as you get a c mark this c as z and go to left so while you are going to left you can also have any number of z in the path keep going left you can have any number of b in the path keep going left you can have any number of y in the path keep going left you can have any number of a in the path keep going left as soon as you encounter an x come back to the same position now again mark this a as x mark this a as x now in path you can have any number of a you can have any number of y so leave all the y as it is mark this b as y mark this b as y again go to the right you can have n number of b as well as you can also have n number of z you can have n number of z mark this c as z now come back so while coming back you can have n number of z you can have n number of y you can have n number of b's also and as soon as you get a x you will go to the right so after going to the right you will see after this x immediately we have a y is x ke baad immediately aapke paas hai y so if after this x immediately i get a y i leave the y as it is i will go to the right direction to see if there is any b left if there is no b left and there is no c left then i can say the number of a b and c are equal so i can go to the state q4 we can have n number of y in the beginning leave all the y as it is now we can have n number of z leave all the z as it is keep going to the right and we can have n number of z leave all the z as it is keep going right as soon as you encounter uh, a blank symbol because after this z we have a blank symbol as soon as you have encountered a blank symbol leave the blank as it is go to left and accept it to the state q6 then you are going to accept this entire function okay so basically it is very easy so how can we say here that uh, no b are left because you see i have not given any transition here i have given it uh, that if x is are finished if a are finished they are not giving any transition by saying that if b are still left because if b are still left this will go to a dead configuration just like you have push down automata in your push down automata if uh, for a certain symbol no transition is given it means we are going to a dead configuration in the same way while going to the right direction if any b is left so here i have not given any transition for that b if any c is left i have not given any transition for that c so that means if any b is left or any c is left in that case this will go to a dead configuration it will say this string is not present in the language clear hua itna is it clear so far
okay so let me show you the working again because some of you might still not be able to understood it understand it so some of you might will still say ki sir samajh mein nahi aaya please explain so let me explain this again but with a counter example by saying the string that will not be accepted okay so some of you might still say that you cannot understand so let me explain this again so let us assume that we have this string on the tape the string is a a b b b c and c and this is a blank symbol and here also we have a blank symbol so we already know because in this case you have number of b is more as compared to number of c and a so hence this string is not present in the language now what will happen in this case in initial state the reader head at this position we get the a mark it as x go to the right direction then we can have any number of a here then as soon as we encounter a b mark it as y go to the right direction we can have any number of b here as soon as we get a c mark it as z now go to the left direction so while going to the left we can have any number of b any number of b we can also have any number of y and we can have any number of a as soon as we get a x as soon as we get a x leave this x as it is and go to the right direction so we are at this position so right now we are at this position so again mark this a as x go to the right direction we can have any number of y's as soon as we encounter a b we mark it as y go to the right direction we can have any number of b as it is we can have a z as soon as we get a c mark it as z go to the right direction now here sorry mark it as z and go to the left direction not the right direction this is the left direction so while going back we can have any number of z we can have any number of b we can have any number of y we can have any number of a but as soon as you encounter x again go to the right direction and after this x after encountering this x on the after this x directly we have a, we have a y symbol so that means we have given this transaction so if we if y is left so leave all the y as it is now we are going to check and if there is any b is left or c is left so we are going to the right now here you can see we can have n number of y we are going to the right but because there is a b here so we do not have any transition here by saying if there is any b left so because there is still a b left and we do not have a transition for b that means it will go to a dead state and dead configuration it will say the string is not accepted so this means the string is not accepted it will be clear to everyone good so let us take more examples here uh, we have a language which is a raised to power i b raised to power j c raised to power k d raised to power l or let me just write in a simple manner rather than make it complicated let me make the same language as simple l is equal to a raised to power n b raised to power m c raised to power n d raised to power m such that n comma m is not greater than is greater than or equal to 1 now here you can see what we are trying to say is that a and c should be equal and b and d should be equal here a or c equal hona chahiye b or d be equal hona chahiye okay okay so you already know that for this given language you cannot create a push down automata this language ke liye aap push down automata nahi bana sakte you cannot create a push down automata for this given language which is an bm cn dm okay so but we can make a turing machine so how can you make a turing machine what you can do is load the string on the tape so you have a string which is a a b b b c c d d and d so let us assume this is our string okay now what i can do here is first of all i can check if a and c are equal or not so i can say i can go to a i will go to a mark it as x or mark it as w any symbol you like so let us say i mark it as w i will go to c mark it as 
x again come to a market as w go to c market as x again come to a now you can see though no a are left there's no a so if there's no a now i'm going to check if there's any c left there's no c left that means a and c are equal now we can go and check for b so we can go to b market as y and go to d market as z again go to b market as y and then go to d market as z again go to b market as y go to d market as z so in this way you can also check whether this string is present in this language right so because after this if there is no b left and there is no left, d left that means b and d are also equal so in this case you can tell b and d are equal okay so <coughs> sorry So basically, I can make a Turing machine for this. I can make a Turing machine, bana sakta hon, but again, that Turing machine is going to be very lengthy. So that is why I am not taking this example. Uh, I can make it, it's very easy, but again, that will become unnecessarily lengthy for us. And I don't think so, there is any benefit of doing that. Okay. So I hope that you understood this part. Let me take some other example. <coughs> so that it clear ho jai, so that it becomes clear for you. So I told you one more example, which is the language is a raised power n, b raised power 2n, c raised power 3n such that n is greater than or equal to 1. So what you can do in this case, when you load this string on the tape, so assuming that you have a, a 1a, 2b and 3c, this is your symbol. So what you can do here is mark a as x, then mark 2b as y, and then mark 3c as z. Again come back. If there's a left, mark a as left, mark 2 as by b y, and then mark 3c as z. Again come back and so on. If after some time if there's no a left, then there should not be any b, there should not be any c. So I can also take this in a bigger example. If there are two a's, there are four c's, and there are uh, 6 so there are 4 b's and there are 6 c's okay so in this case what i'll do mark a as x mark 2 b as y mark 3 c as z again come back mark a as x mark 2 b as y mark 3 c as z again come back if there's any a left there's no a left is there any b left there's no b left is there any c left yes there's a c left so that means we can say this is not acceptable okay so basically you can use this thing to perform these operations it's not clear hai? so I'll take some more examples here but again uh, these languages should be clear to you Ki for these languages you can create a Turing machine there exists some method so that you can create a Turing machine so a method exists karta hai jisse aap iske liye Turing machine bana sakte hai. I hope this much is clear now there's something interesting I told you I told you that <coughs> I told you something very clearly that Turing machine is as powerful as your modern day computers Turing machine jo hai wo aapke modern day computers jitne hi powerful hai now if the Turing machine is as powerful as your modern day computer that means all the operations that your modern day computer is able to perform your Turing machine should be able to perform all those operations also. Jo jo operations aapka modern day computer perform karta hai, aapke Turing machine bhi wo sabhi operations perform usko karna chahi. If you, your Turing machine cannot perform all those operations, then you cannot say that Turing machine is as powerful as your modern day computer. Okay. So what are the operations that the Turing machine can perform? What are the operations that computers can perform? What are the operations that computers can perform? Computers can do number one, we have an addition, addition operation. Second, we have a subtraction operation. Third, we have a multiplication operation. 
फोर्थ वी हैव अ डिविजन ऑपरेशन फिफ्थ वी हैव कॉपिंग ऑपरेशन सिक्स वी माइट बी हैविंग सम अदर ऑपरेशन इसका कोई और ऐसा ऑपरेशन है दैट योर कंप्यूटर कैन परफॉर्म एंड ट्यूरिंग मशीन कैन नॉट थिंक अबाउट इट इज देर एनी ऑपरेशन दैट योर कंप्यूटर्स कैन परफॉर्म एंड ट्यूरिंग मशीन कैन नॉट परफॉर्म दैर इज कंपेरिजन ओके सो दैर इज कंपेरिजन ऑफ टू नंबर्स ओके सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द ऑपरेशन दैट योर मॉडर्न डे कंप्यूटर्स कैन परफॉर्म राइट द ऑपरेशन आर एडिशन सब्रैक्शन मल्टीप्लीकेशन डिविजन कॉपिंग एंड कंपेरिजन नॉ बिकॉज योर कंप्यूटर्स कैन परफॉर्म ऑल दीज ऑपरेशन ऑल दीज सिक्स ऑपरेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड नो हाउ द कंप्यूटर एक्चुअली डू इट एंड इफ दीज ऑपरेशन कैन ऑल्सो बी डन बाई ट्यूरिंग मशीन अगर ये ऑपरेशन जो है ये ट्यूरिंग मशीन भी कर सकती है देन आई कैन से वी विल बी एबल टू परफॉर्म ऑल द एल्गोरिथमिक फंक्शन If your CPU, if you look at your computer, in your computer, why do you call it as a computer? Because it is a computing device. Because it is a computing device. So, in your CPU of the computer, when you give any instruction, your CPU is only going to perform computation. Algorithm is the instructions that you have given, but CPU is only able to perform the computations. CPU is only going to perform these fundamental operations, and that's it. सीपीयू जो है वो सिर्फ इन्हीं फंडामेंटल ऑपरेशंस को परफॉर्म करता है एंड वी क्रिएट अदर एल्गोरिथम्स वी क्रिएट अदर थिंग्स सो दैट आई मीन सो दैट वी कैन कन्वर्ट एवरी एल्गोरिथम इनटू दिस फंडामेंटल ऑपरेशंस ओके सो फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू राइटिंग एन एल्गोरिथम टू फाइंड द स्क्वायर ऑफ अ नंबर राइट सो दैट एल्गोरिथम यू हैव रिटर्न अ सी प्रोग्राम सो दैट सेम एल्गोरिथम यू हैव यू कैन हैव यू कैन ऑल्सो राइट द सेम एल्गोरिथम इन अ बाइनरी कोड यू कैन राइट द सेम एल्गोरिथम इन अ असेंबली कोड so if you write a uh, uh, function to perform uh, square and you have written this c program so that c program will be converted to a byte code again that byte code or assembly code will be converted to a binary code that is your executable code so in return everything will be converted to an executable code and that executable code is basically going to perform these operations only so basically your entire power of a computer system is to execute these operations and we can create algorithms which are sitting over these operations to perform various functions so somehow if i can prove that these operations can be done by a computer and your turing machine can also be uh, can also do these operations so we can say your computers are as powerful as your turing machine or your turing machines are as powerful as your computers okay so let us understand these operations one by one in case of a computer when you have a cpu so this cpu is basically an adder logic This CPU is basically your adder logic. It is not a subtractor logic. ऐसा नहीं है देखो what happens is some people might say, sir, in your CPU you have a circuit for addition, you have a circuit for multiplication, you have a circuit for division, and you have a circuit for subtraction, you have a circuit for comparison, and so on. Some people might say it, but ऐसा नहीं है this is not done. Because in your CPU you only have a adder logic. Your CPU can only perform addition. आपका जो CPU है वो सिर्फ addition ही perform कर सकता है Your CPU do not have any adder logic. You do not have any subtraction logic. How does subtraction is done by addition? Let me show you. <coughs> so adder logic means if you give a number x, if you give a number y, it will perform x plus y. Correct? So what we do is in your computer system. when i have want to perform addition i can just perform x plus y and when i perform subtraction in that case we do x plus of minus y so that is basically plus of minus y means it is x minus y it means it is x minus y and how does this minus y how do we show this represent this minus y so there are three methods for representing this minus y one is your sign bit representation second is your ones complement and third is your twos complement <coughs> so it is sign bit representation ones complement twos complement to represent negative numbers okay now for example <coughs> your c language uses twos complement representations to represent this negative number c language jo hai wo twos complement ka use karte negative number ko represent karne ke liye okay 
Now, if I want to perform this, how can I prove that this can be done by addition? ये addition से किया जा सकता है। तो इसको थोड़ा सा ध्यान से समझना। Those people who are watching it for the very first time, please listen to this carefully. It is very interesting. Interesting how you can perform subtraction just by edit, adding two numbers. So let us suppose we have a number x which is four, and we have a number y which is two. Okay, if I do 4 plus 2, the result should be 6. If I do 4 minus 2, the result should be your 2. Okay, now what I can do is I can represent this 4 and I can represent this 2 in binary. So let us assume that 4 is uh, represented some way, 4 can be represented as uh, 1 double 0, and this 2 can be represented as. Uh, 0 1 0 this is your 2 okay so if you are performing addition that means you are performing 1 double 0 plus 0 1 0 so your result will be 1 1 0 and this 1 1 0 represents your number 6 number 6 okay and here we are imagining that we are just assuming that we have only three bits here the numbers are created using three bits even if the numbers are created using four bits still we can perform the same operation अगर आपकी four bits की number होती, still you can perform the same operation, still the result will be six. Okay. Now if I want to perform this subtraction, but how will I perform this subtraction? I will do four plus of minus two. Four plus of minus two. And how do you represent this minus two? You can represent it by using two's complement representation. Two's complement representation. So if two is represented as if two is represented as zero zero one zero, then it's one's complement will be represented as 1101 1, 1, and its two's complement will be represented as 1110 1, 1, because you are going to add plus one with it so it will become 1110 1, 1, so this is a two's complement representation of plus mi minus two so that means if i add 0100 0, 0, this is representing your number four and if i add 1110 1, 1, this is representing your number minus two so add both of these numbers, your result will be 0, 1, 0, 0 and again you have a carry 1. So here if you look at, if you leave this carry still, if you look at this number, what is this number? This number is representing a number 2. So the result of this subtraction is 2. But what if, if, I, if I want to do 2 minus 4 because 2 minus 4 is going to be result which is minus 2. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. So that means if your 4 can be represented as 4 can be represented as 0 1 0 0 so then 1's complement of this will become 1 0 1 1 and 2's complement of this will become 2's complement of this number will become add plus 1 to this so that is 0 0 1 and 1 so this is your 2's complement so this is representing minus 4. So now if I add 2 plus of minus 4, 2 plus of minus 4, that means 2 can be represented as 0, 0, 1, 0, and minus 4 can be represented as 1, 1, 0, 0. So the entire addition is going to be 0, 1, 1, 1, and this you can clearly say this is already representing minus 2. So basically, just by adding these two numbers, you can perform subtractions. Okay, it's not clear, sabko? Now you know that addition is very easy, addition you can do. And subtraction can also be done by addition that means to perform subtraction you only need to find if two's complement of a number can be calculated using a Turing machine so can a Turing machine add two numbers then can a Turing machine perform two's complement of two's complement of a number to find the negative part so that we can also perform subtraction using addition it's not clear here now the third part is multiplication multiplication so what does this multiplication mean multiplication means if i so say 5 multiplied by 4 it means two things either 5 is added four times or either 4 is added five times so that is your multiplication that means your multiplication operation can also be done by addition your subtraction operation can be done by addition and two's complement your multiplication operation can also be done by addition and how does this division operation is performed what do you mean by division operation what is the division operation division operation means subtraction how can i say that if i say 10 divided by 2 the result is 5 so basically when we do division it means 
if how many times I have to subtract 2 for, from 10 so that it will become 0. So 10 minus 2 again minus 2 again minus 2 again minus 2 again minus 2. If you subtract this to 5 times then the entire result will be 0. So we have to count how many times you can subtract 2 from 10 10 so that result will become 0 so basically your subtract your division operation can also be performed by subtraction and your subtraction can also be performed by your addition so that is why in a computer system you do not require all these circuits you do not require a circuit for subtraction you do not require a circuit for uh, division you do not require a circuit for multiplication you only require a circuit for addition, you only require a circuit to find 2's complement. If you can find these two things, you can perform addition, you can perform multiplication, you can perform subtraction. All these operations can be easily done. So that means I only have to prove, I have to prove only one thing, that your Turing machine should be able to do addition and your Turing machine should be able to do your subtraction. So, or you can say 2's complement. If a Turing machine is able to do addition, if a Turing machine is able to do 2's complementation, that means all these first four operations can also be done. And this comparison is, again it is one more operation, I will show you how this comparison this is done. So, this is the way how I can perform all the first four operations. Is that clear as Is it clear so, so far? So, let me rub it up and I will show you how these operations can be done using a Turing machine. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Now I have to show you how to perform addition. I have to show you how to perform addition. Addition of two numbers. Addition of two numbers using a Turing machine. If you can perform addition of two numbers using a Turing machine, obviously that will be good, right? Now to represent numbers, there are various methods that do exist. You can represent a number with the base 1 or you can say the radix 1, radix 1, so which is basically a unary number. You can perform this addition on the base 2 which is radix 2, that means it is a binary number. You can have radix 3 which is a ternary number you can have a radix 10 which is basically your decimal number you can have a radix 16 and so on which is your hexadecimal numbers and so on correct so basically you do not really need all these uh, different things even if the result is of some expression is uh, in given in binary you can also convert that binary to decimal and you can convert that decimal to hexadecimal also binary ternary quinary and so on all of these things can be done easily okay clear as go. so what do i mean to say by this is that when you have a number which is given in binary so if you want to perform some calculations you can perform that calculation in unary you can perform that calculation in binary you can perform that calculation in ternary it doesn't matter what system you are using the thing is the result in each of these systems is going to be the same the result is the same and what is the difference between all of them if i say the number is binary the binary means the number is having only one uh, symbol right so the language is having only one symbol so the symbol is one so let us say it is zero correct or i can say it is one just use one symbol to represent some uh, to, for presentation then we say the number is unary 
in case of binary we use two symbols which is 0 and 1 so binary two symbols unary one symbol that one symbol can be 0 that one symbol can be 1 that one symbol can be 2 anything you can use but we are going to use only one symbol in radix we have three symbols so that is in turning <coughs> turning number we have three symbols in quinary number we have four symbols in decimal numbers we have 10 symbols so symbols are 0 1 2 3 4 up to so on 9 so in decimal you have 10 symbols in case of hexadecimal you have 16 symbols 0 1 2 up to so on 9 a b up to so on f so here in case of hexadecimal you have 16 symbols so in unary if i want to represent the number 4 so number 4 can be represented by 1111 1, 1, 1. that means you have to write 1 4 times in binary if you want to represent 4 so 4 can be represented by 0 1 1 0 so here the base is 2 here the base is 1 in ternary if the, you want to represent a number 4 to represent a number 4 you have to write something which is uh, 1 2 base 3 so how it will be 1 2 base 3 because you are going to calculate 1 raised to power or I should say 1 1 base 3 so 1 into 3 raised to power 1 plus 1 into 3 raised to power 0 which is going to be 3 plus 1 which is 4 this is how you can write in ternary in again decimal if you want to represent a number 4 that will be just 4 we have a specific symbol for this in hexadecimal it is just 4 because we have a special symbol for this so if you are performing addition in unary, if you perform unary addition, so what you will do is, if you add 1 plus 1 plus 1 1 1 1, so this is the number 3 and this is the number 4, so the result will be 7 months. Okay. In binary, if you add number 3 and 4, number 3 can be represented by 1 1 and number 4 can be represented by 0 0 0 1, 1 0 0. So this is 3 and this is 4. If you add both of them, so the result will be 1 1 1 which is represented as 7. So result is 7 and here also we can perform the same operations. So all that I want to say is there exists an algorithm which can convert a unary number to decimal number, which can convert a unary number to radix number, we can, which can convert, convert one number system to another number system. Doesn't matter you are performing calculation in which number system, you might be performing calculation in binary, you might be performing calculation is in unary, you might be performing calculation in ternary, you might be performing calculation in decimal, doesn't matter whatever system you are using, still the calculations can be performed. Is that clear? Is it clear with all of you? Is it point clear? So whatever I want to say with this. So all I want to say is, doesn't matter if you are performing calculations in unary, binary or any of the number systems, the thing will be the same, the result will be the same. Now, what I can do is, I will show you a Turing machine that can perform calculations in unary. I will show you a Turing machine that can perform calculations in unary, and then I will show you a Turing machine that can perform calculations in I will tell you how can you make a similar kind of machine for binary. I will tell you that if you want to binary addition perform binary, how can you perform additions in binary. So then that is your work. You can make a, a machine, Turing machine to perform calculations in binary. Because in giving unary that is enough, right? See all I want to tell you here is because computer is as powerful as your modern day computers. Nobody is going to ask you to make a Turing machine for unary or binary number in your examination nobody is going to ask you that all we need to create is logic so that we can argue with the statements now we have statements with the argument karna hai. okay so if I say we have a number so if I want to perform two additions which is 1 1 1 1 blank this is 1 1 1 1 so basically it is showing that we have two numbers this is your number x that is 3 and this is your number y that is 3 and i want to perform additions of these two numbers so what i can do here is i can start from here i will go to this so we have a blank in the middle by saying this is basically representing a separation that means before this blank we have the first number and after this blank we have the second number that's it so what you can do is you can make a Turing machine that will convert the first blank as 1 and that will convert the last one as blank. So all these numbers are together. So this is representing a number 7 in unary. 
as simple as that. It's so simple, right? So what you can do is, initially you add straight Q0. In the beginning, you can have a one. Leave the one as it is. Go to the right. Go to the state. Your or instead of making a different loop, let me just do it in the same loop. You have one. Leave the one as it is. Go to right. Just go to right. As soon as you have a blank, as soon as you get a blank, leave. Change the blank to one and go to right. We are going to the right. We are going to the state Q2. Now we can have any number of one, leave them as one, go to right. And as soon as you encounter this blank, as soon as you encounter a blank, leave it as blank, go to left, and then change a one to blank. Change a one to blank and go to left and so on. And you can accept it. So basically it's very simple. In the beginning, you can have any one, leave all the one as it is, go to right. As soon as you encounter first blank, change this blank to one, go to right. Again, you can have any number of one, go to right. As soon as you get this last blank, leave the blank as it is, go to left and change this one as blank and then you can perform this operation. So it's the way you addition operation ko perform. Kar sakte. It is so simple. Itna asan hai. So simple to do it. Correct? Now, if I want to perform the same kind of operation in binary numbers, so you know how the binary numbers are performed. So we have uh, 0 plus 0, the result is 0. If we have 0 plus 1, the result is 1. If we have 1 plus 0, the result is 1. If we have 1 plus 1, the result is 0 and carry is 1. Okay, so what I can do here in this case is, if we have some numbers in binary that we have loaded into the tape, let us assume the number is 0, 1, 0, blank, 1, 1, 0. And this is also blank, 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 and so on. You can perform this, right? So what you can do here is, you can go to the first number. So mark it as x. Let us suppose the first number was 0. Then go to this number. So it is mark it as y. And because this number is 1, so 0 plus 1 is going to be, so 0 plus 1 is going to be 1. So you can write this one somewhere here. The result is 1 somewhere. Again, go to the next number. Mark it as x. It was 1. Go to the next number. Mark it as y. It was 1. So 1 plus 1, the result is going to be 0 and the carry is 1. So I can write the result somewhere here. I can assume that I can store carry somewhere. I will use this tape to store carry somewhere. Again, come back. Perform this operation on this. Perform this operation on this. Write the result here and you can add the carry also. So in this way, basically in this way, you can also perform binary addition. So obviously designing this Turing machine is going to be very complicated. It needs a lot of practice. I can give you that diagram, but again, there's no requirement for the examination. That will be complete wastage of our time. Nobody is going to ask you in the examination to create a Turing machine to perform this binary addition. Nobody is going to do it. They are only interested is that only interested to know that whether you know this or not that binary addition can also be performed using a Turing machine. If you know this, that is more than enough. Nobody is going to ask you to make a diagram for this in your examination. I hope this much is clear. So basically you can perform addition operation using a Turing machine. And now I just have to prove whether you can perform a two's complementation operation or not. If you can perform two's complementation operation, then you can also perform subtraction. You can also perform multiplication. You can also perform division. Just by having these two operations, you can perform all these different operations. Okay. Now let's do it. How can you perform two's complementation operation using a Turing machine? So it's very easy. To find a two's complement, there also exists a shortcut. I think I've already told you that shortcut, but let me revise that shortcut again. If you have two numbers, like it is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. For this number, if you want to find a two's complementation, so what are the basic steps that we perform? The basic step is find one's complement and then plus one. So the one's complement of this number is going to be 0, 0, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1, 1. This is your 1's complement. And if you perform plus 1 with this, we get a result which is 0, 0, 0, 0. And this 0 will be converted to 1. And we get 1, 0, 0. Okay. So the shortcut is this way. That if you have any number and you want to find a 2's complement of this number, go start from the right direction, go to the left direction, leave all the zeros as it is. As soon as you get first one, leave the one as it is. So you can see this number, which is one four zeros and one four zero. This is same. 
and then go to the left direction if you get a 1 change 1 to 0 if you get a 0 change 0 to 1 that's it so easy such an easy task to find this okay okay so how can you make a Turing machine for this obviously Turing machine kaise banayenge so simple initially you have a straight Q0 so in the beginning what I want to do is I want to go to, go to the extreme right so you can have any one leave one as it is go to right you can have any zero leave zero as it is go to right as soon as you get extreme right blank leave the blank as it is and go to left now while going left you go to the state q1 any number of zeros you are going to encounter leave all the zero as it is and keep going to the left because here any number of zeros you are going to encounter keep going to the left as soon as you get the first one as soon as you get the first one leave the one as, and it is, as it is go to left and then go to the state q q2 if you get a zero change it to one go to left if you get a one change it to zero go to left and as soon as again a one more blank symbol is encountered then you can accept it and your work is done so it is so simple to even design a Turing machine to perform a two's complementation operation so you can perform addition operation from a Turing machine you can perform Turing two's complementation operation from a Turing machine so obviously you can also perform subtraction you can also perform division you can also perform multiplication all the computation operations can also be performed by a Turing machine clear so if all the computation operations can be performed if you Turing machine se aap sabhi computation operations perform kar sakte hain, it means you will be able to perform operations like square square root even raised to power 3 raised to power 4 raised to power x 2 raised to power n 2 raised to power 3 2 raised to power 11 so all the power operations logarithmic operations jitne bhi mathematical operations are the basics of every mathematical operation is multiplication division and subtraction so if you can perform these operations so basically you can perform any operation whatsoever which can be done mathematically so now your Turing machine becomes a computing device it can act as a computing device it can act as a computer but still there are few more tasks that can be done using a Turing machine that can be done by your computer but not a Turing machine that for that also we have a solution for that also we have a method how can you perform those tasks using that can be done by a computer not by a Turing machine okay let me show you okay so So let me give you some of the interesting operations, some of the methods. So let us assume that we have, uh, we want to perform the operation which is uh, multiplication. Second is we want to perform the copy operation. Okay. So first of all multiplication operation, how can it be done? So let us suppose we want to multiply number 2 with number 3. Okay. So what you can do here is you can mark this one what okay let me show you how it can be done so again i don't think so i have to explain this multiplication operation but again let me just go through with it it is not required for us right now but still we can go through with it so what you can do is we want to multiply 2 by 3 so 2 by 3 is going to be 6 so what you can do is mark this one as x and go to right mark this one as y now go to left mark this one mark this one as z again go to right mark this blank as one again go to or or make it mark this instead of z let us let us do it this way so mark this one as one go to right mark this blank as one go to left mark this one as one go to right mark this blank as one go to left mark this y as one go to right mark this one as one and so on right or instead of this you can also mark with x you can also do it this way so multiple ways of doing the same work there is no specific one way operation so this is one 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 and this is blank blank and blank so what you can do is mark this one as x go to right mark all these one as y okay now start making a copy of them so uh, mark this one as z go to right mark this blank as one again mark this one as z go to right mark this blank as one mark this one as z go to right mark this blank as one okay so we have created one extra copy and we have some z again come back here mark the second one as x 
So again, what you can do is start with the same operation. So mark the second one as X. Again, mark this one as Z. Go to right. Mark the uh, copy one one. Mark this Y as Z. Copy one. Mark this Y as Z. Copy one. Again, check. Is there any one left here? There is no one left. So then, what you can do is you can change all of these Z as one. Now you can see how many ones are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Sorry. Six. Two multiplied by three is six, na? Huh? Okay. So sorry, we have to make two copies. So I actually made specifically three copies. We have to make two copies only. So uh, here for this one, we have to make one copy, and then for this also we have to make one copy. So what you can do simply is uh, you can see the six ones are there. Anyways, after performing these also, what you can do is instead of making this as Z, leave them as Z as it is. You will always get a three ones here, six ones here. Again, you can perform the same operation. But again, I don't think so that uh, there's no such a difficulty with it. Nobody is going to ask you to perform this operation. All you know is that you should be able to perform this. That's it. That you should be able to perform multiplication. If you can perform multiplication, that is your work is done. That is more than enough. Okay, so I don't think so. I have to spend a lot of time with it. But again, I just have to show you that this operation can also be done. That's it. So I don't have to create a, create a Turing machine for this. Next, we have a copy operation. Again, the copy operation can also be done this way. So if we have some data, let us suppose we have this data which is written in unary, or if we have some data which is written in binary, I have to make a one more copy of this. What I can do is mark this one as X, go to write, mark a blank as uh, Y or mark this blank mark this blank as y again go to left mark this one as x again go to right mark this blank as y if there's no one left so what you can do is convert all of them as one convert all of them as one so again you can see there's one more extra copy that you have for the same data so again as i'm saying iske alawa bhi bahut tarike ho sakte hain to perform the same operation i can also perform exactly the same copy operation in one more method there are many ways there's no one fixed way it also so like just how you create different programs but you can do in beginning mark everyone as x now come back mark this x as one go to right mark this blank as one go to left mark this x as one go to right mark this blank as one now go to left is there any one le x left there's no le x left so you can see you have created two copies of the same data okay so you can also perform the copy operation using a turing machine so now it is very very clear to all of you that uh, you can perform all the mathematical functions all the mathematical operations using a turing machine addition subtraction multiplication copying and so on these operations can also be performed now you will say sir you are not right sir aap sahi nahi hai you are not right why i say why i am not right you say sir we have one computer and your one computer can run many programs you do not have to change your computer to perform different operations you have one computer you can, you can give different algorithms to this computer and this computer will perform all the tasks but for every problem you have to make a different turing machine for every problem you have to make a new turing machine every problem you have to make a turing new turing machine but for every problem we do not have to make a new computer so that means computers are more powerful this is something that you can say ab bol sakte ho ki because hame har ek problem ke liye ek nayi turing machine banani pad sakti hai lekin hamara ek hi computer har ek nayi problem ko solve kar sakta hai to computer zyada powerful hai but here also i have a special turing machine i can give you one more special turing machine so what does this turing machine say in that turing machine we have three tapes okay one tape second tape and this is your third tape you will be having three tapes and you have a finite control and this finite control is having three heads okay so just like in one computer you can load an algorithm to solve a problem and what does that algorithm mean algorithm is just a binary description of the instruction so you give instruction to the computer to solve the problem and that instructions are given in binary in the same way every turing machine can also be converted to binary so har ek turing machine ko aap binary mein convert kar sakte every turing machine you can also give the definition of a turing machine in binary every turing machine can be converted to binary so what you can do is you can load the definition of a turing machine here so load your turing machine in any format you like for example the famous format is binary you can load the definition of a turing machine in binary and you can make this turing machine to read binary instructions and then you can store 
your intermediate state here intermediate state here ki right now i am presently current at present kis which location and here you can give your input you can give your input so what you can do is read the input go to this to, uh, definition and see what is the operation you have to perform or which state you have to go and then that store that current state here again read second input here check your current state again check now which state we have to go again read the input check your current state again check from which state we have to go so whatever your new state will be are going to store those new states here in the intermediate state so basically it will be just like a universal turing machine and using the same turing machine this using this one turing machine you will be able to load definitions of new turing machine just like you, you are able to load programs in a computer system jis tarike se aap computer system mein programs ko load karte hain usi tarike se yahan par you will be able to load the definitions of new turing machines okay so that you are you can perform all the new operations so one turing machine is enough and you will be able to perform every operation with it itna clear tha was it interesting kya itna interesting tha was this class interesting i think only pratibha is there mary is not there nobody nobody else is there so i feel this much is hmm so you have some idea about turing machine you know how this turing machines are working and you have some okay chalo anyways so let us move forward <coughs> so basically there are various different uh, types of turing machine so i'll do one thing i'll take a break and after that break we will cover the various types of turing machine hum log alag alag tarah ki turing machine ko cover karenge so <coughs> meanwhile you can also solve previous year questions and do one thing uh, pratibha i think only pratibha is online others are not online so just do one thing pratibha in the break just go through the pre recorded videos and from the pre recorded videos please go through cyk cnf and gnf that is greback normal form chomsky normal form and cyk algorithm so we'll have this break for half an hour to one hour you'll be able to cover these topics in half an hour to one hour so uh, because i'm not covering it because again this uh, uh, cyk algorithm is not required for ugc net even for gate it is not required but you should have some knowledge what is a cyk algorithm and uh, your cnf and gnf is required so they only need what they only want to know whether you know the definition of C cnf and gnf or not ab uh, chomsky normal form ya greback normal form ki definition jante hain ya nahi jante wo bas exam mein isi se concerned hai they are not going to ask you to convert one uh, grammar to a cnf form theek hai so uh, during the break time just uh, go through with it and if you have any doubt please ask and uh, most probably we will be able to finish turing machine topic today lot of things that we have to cover for turing machine but more other important portion is your computability and decidability that we will be covering tomorrow so whatever we have covered till now still you will be able to solve 90% of your ugc net question till this point of time only two to three questions they have asked from uh, uh, computability and decidability but in gate they ask questions from computability and decidability if you are planning to go for gate that is good and it is important for you to go through computability and decidability for ugc net till now in recent two years only they have asked question from uh, computability and decidability that is why i am covering it uh, otherwise whatever we have covered till now jitna tak hum log kar chuke hain so you will be able to solve 90% or 95% of your ugc net questions from this okay so let us meet after the break and then we will continue कोई डाउट है तो यू कैन आस्क मी अ डाउट यू कैन मैसेज इन दिस चैट विंडो 